Hey everybody, we're going to be taking a look at a little news clip of uh, Fox News. Yeah. Uh, talking about some of the potential Democratic uh, candidates for 2020. Some have announced, some have not yet announced, but Fox News has got a panel of uh, stodgy old men to talk about these candidates. I guess uh, a lot of the candidates are themselves stodgy old men, but some of them are you know, powerful women, and some of them are minorities, and, uh, you know, there's all kinds of uh, different stuff going on this uh, Democratic candidate season, and uh, Fox News has got something to say, and uh, we're going to take a look at that clip in just a second, but before we do that, I'd like to uh, say a word about my sponsor, Vikings War of Clans. Check it out. Right here. Vikings War of Clans was inspired by the famous strategy and RPG games of the 90s like the original Warcraft. It even kind of reminds me of SimCity a little. The younger generation out there might not know about these games like us ancient bastards in our 30s do, but it's great that someone out there is still making games like this. What makes Vikings World so addictive is that more than 20 million online players are constantly changing the way that the game is played through a never-ending series of battles over resources and forging new alliances and even competing in live events. So support my channel by downloading Vikings for free only from my links in the description box and get the special bonus of 200 gold and a protective shield which can be extremely useful for the start. Don't forget to look me up and join my Vikings clan under my nickname TJ the Graceful and you'll be glad you did. And as always, remember that supporting my sponsors helps to support these videos without you having to come out of pocket in any way, shape, or form, so that's always good. Uh, this first thing we're going to look at is uh, a little bit of Fox News stuff. Uh, this is some <laughs> ridiculous-looking bald guy. You know, not, not that uh, there's anything wrong with being bald, you know. Um, you know, I, I myself plan to rock an awesome skullet at some point, uh, you know. But uh, this guy here, I mean, I think we can all agree he's absurd uh, just at a glance, uh, you know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's going to have some real poignant, interesting, uh, intelligent things to say, and I'm just prejudging. So I should probably take a step back and let the man have his, have his, have his day in court here. Welcome back. A new poll shows who Iowa Democrats want as their candidate in 2020. Joe Biden is in first with... <laughs> oh, excuse me, sorry. 32%, followed by Bernie Sanders with 19. Better Sanders. With 11%, and Elizabeth Warren with 8%. All right, let's bring in... Uh, let's start with the campaign guys. Corey... So wait, this guy hosts a show? I thought this was just a guest. <laughs> They're letting this dude host something? <laughs> okay. David, I mean, look, you're not going to say who, you know... Oh, God. What is, look at this panel, hmm. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> like these guys here, I don't know, uh, my cursor, yeah, I have my cursor. This guy and this guy look like a before and after picture. This dude just looks like a smug jackass, and this is just the obligatory hot Fox News chick. And then they're presided over by, you know, uh, Devin Tracy's dad or something. I don't know what the fuck is going on there. Okay. Uh, that President Trump is vulnerable to any of them, but just give us your take on that list, particularly better. Look, he's a complete... You don't know if President Trump is vulnerable to any of them? Let me make something clear to you. President Trump is vulnerable to anyone. Like, if you ran a... <laughs> a plank of wood with a fucking face drawn on it against President Trump, the, the plank has a chance, so let's just make that clear. Uh, yes, yeah, so all those candidates have a chance against Trump. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, victory is is assured. That's not a good way to think. But, uh, yeah, I think all those those people have a chance against him. Completely unproven commodity. He's never won an election uh, for a real race other than a small congressional district in a big state. And so, look, he's uh, he's not going to be leading the ticket that I can guarantee you. What you are going to see is a Michael Bloomberg, a Joe Biden, maybe crooked H back on the top of the ticket. Some we don't know. know. This is Bloomberg, you, you, this guy, I mean, like, okay, look, well, Biden, at least there's polling to support the idea of Biden being at the top of the ticket. Now, I don't think so, ultimately. I think that at the end of the day, Biden is going to spin his wheels in the mud. I think people 
Or I, I think a lot of people are just looking back at fondness. A lot of people on the on the the left in America looking back with fondness at the Obama administration. Like, remember when there was dignity? Remember when our president could lie to us with dignity? Remember when our president could do evil stuff, but he still seemed like a nice guy because the media wasn't trying to jump down his throat? Uh, who was, you know, we can't get Obama back. That's unconstitutional. But maybe we can get Biden in there. We got to get Biden, you guys. I don't think so. I don't think Biden is is going anywhere. I think that people are going. Biden's going to hit the campaign trail, assuming he even decides to run. Uh, Biden's going to hit the campaign trail and immediately it's just going to be like, wait, this guy actually now that I'm remembering kind of sucks. He's not very charismatic. He's not very interesting. He's a total fucking gaff machine. Um, He's a bloviating nitwit and uh, he's not dynamic. He's not interesting. He doesn't have any exciting uh, ideas for a new direction to take this country in. Uh, He's he's about as compelling as a bowl of fucking porridge. Uh, so I think that you're just going to see that favorability in polls number just go down and down and down. Um, that's my prediction as far as Biden Bloomberg and what was the other one? Eat crooked H Hillary. Yeah. Those, those people are not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. America would never fucking in a million years consider Bloomberg and Democrats, uh, would rather slit their own fucking throats then put Hillary back on top of the ticket and repeat the failure of 2016. So this guy has no fucking idea what he's talking about, in my opinion. I I thought when I watched her concession, at that moment, I thought, you know, you have not given up. You're going to be going... She'll never give up. We could only hope. Look, you know, the Democrats are... I don't think that that they can do that to themselves again, put her at the top of the ticket. Well, at least this guy has sense enough to know that. Elizabeth Warren is is really worn out or welcome with the American people. I don't think she's going to be strong. Joe Biden is a serious uh, candidate. There's no question about that. He will give this president a run for his money when it comes to the working men and women, the the blue-collar worker that Joe Biden has spent his career trying to cultivate his image within that. But if you look at the... You look at the man... Joe Biden's a joke. All right. I don't know why. Well, I, I, I do. I do know why a, a panel of Fox News people are pushing the Joe Biden narrative. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't think that that's I, I, I feel like I got my finger on the pulse of Democratic voters a little bit better than this group. And I'm not feeling I'm not feeling the Biden rumble. Oh, Biden. Yes, Biden is the one. He will lead us to victory. I don't think so. I really don't think so. I don't. I mean, I don't care what the polling says. Call it unscientific for me to go against the polling, but uh, you can't. You can't put all your faith in the polls. <clears throat> When you do, you end up with predictions like there's a 98% chance Hillary's going to win. There was never a 98% chance Hillary was going to win. You know, was there a significant chance Hillary could win? Yes, obviously. And she got more votes than Donald Trump. She just didn't get them where they fucking counted. Um, So whatever, Uh, uh, you know, polls are one thing. And I'm sure that Biden enjoys some popular support now just on the the fond memories that some of the more mainstream Democrats have of Obama, but he's not exciting. He's not going to energize anybody. Um, so this this Biden talk totally premature, in my opinion. Manufacturing jobs that this president has brought back that under Ob- Obama and Biden they were destroyed. You look at the economy. I think this president has a pretty good record to run on, a very good record to run on. But I- I'm not really worried about. That. <laughs> I'm sure you do, Fox News. I'm sure you do. Them, it's the Michael Bloomberg's, the Oprah Winfrey's, the out of the box candidate. Yeah, I, I, the- okay, Bloomberg. Let me just, I don't know what the fuck you guys are thinking with this Bloomberg shit. No one wants Bloomberg, okay? First of all, he's a billionaire, which I don't know if you've noticed, but Democratic Party, not too keen on billionaires as of late. You know, we already feel like with Trump, you had someone buy the election. Now, I don't even think Trump really is a billionaire, but even if he is... Uh, you know, I mean, he didn't really put his own money in it, but there is this popular perception of like just some, he's some out of touch elitist rich guy. Uh, and you know, you look at polling support for things like, um, 
Uh, Elizabeth Warren uh, proposed that we tax existent wealth at a rate of like one or two percent uh, a year, and that polls well with the American people. Um, uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez uh, said we should ha- introduce a seventy percent marginal tax rate uh, for income earned over ten million dollars. And they polled that, and that polls well. Not just with Democrats, by the way. It polls well with independents and Republicans, too. Um, you know, uh, raising capital gains, all the state tax, whatever. Anything, any tax that seem, that is proposed against the millionaire and billionaire class, Americans seem to be kind of on board with that right now, regardless of political affiliation. Uh, what that tells me is there is a tremendous amount of antipathy out there towards the billionaire class, because I think people recognize that they've gotten a uh, free ride for a bit too long at this point. They've caught a little bit too many breaks, and it's time for them to um, pay a little bit more, pay a little bit more into it, especially when so many corporations like we know. Uh, There's been so many years where GM has paid no taxes. We just heard uh, a little while back that Netflix, despite making huge revenues, is paying nothing in taxes. You know, how is the average American supposed to feel when they look at their tax bill and they say, oh, I owe the government, you know, $5,000 or $10,000 or whatever the case may be. But Netflix doesn't owe the government anything. Um now, maybe, you know, the executives at Netflix or whatever own it or, or might might owe something. But, you know, a lot of their money is, uh, <laughs> you know, in, in some sort of uh, tax haven somewhere. You know, they play musical chairs with their money to keep it away from taxation. And they can do that because they're rich and powerful and they know all the right things to do. And they've got high powered accountants that can make sure that they pay virtually nothing. And the American people are sick of that state of affairs. Uh, and we're tired of billionaires. We're tired of the billionaire class. Uh, Jeff Bezos, hugely unpopular guy, left and right, uh, looked at as just a, a stunning piece of shit. Uh, Howard Schultz, the Starbucks guy, trying to get into the election, uh, tr- you know, to talk about his presidential run, polling at like 4% across the board, 4% positive uh, ratings across the board, you know, like tiny little chunk of Democrats, tiny little chunk of independents, tiny little chunk of Republicans want Howard Schultz to uh, buy his way into this election process. Uh, So there's a a huge amount of antagonism towards the super wealthy in this country. Uh, So to say that Bloomberg, a guy who is, uh, you know, was responsible for such unpopular ideas as we're going to limit the size of a, a soda you can get, at a uh, concession uh, stand or a restaurant or whatever. Um, you think that guy, that authoritarian left douchebag, is going to get any traction within the modern day economic uh, populist sort of uh, Democrat party? Uh, now, I know the party leadership is still very much uh, on the, the, you know, using the Bloomberg kind of playbook. You know, which is why you have like Nancy Pelosi in leadership and Chuck Schumer in leadership. Uh, But it seems to me like the rising stars in the Democrat Party are not, uh, you know, elitist billionaire types. They are, you know, I'm a former uh, bartender from the Bronx who has all of these radical ideas about uh, how we're going to totally overhaul American society. This is my Green New Deal. Uh, you know, Bernie Sanders, uh, Medicare for all, free college, all this stuff. We had uh, Andrew Yang, uh, you know, who uh, just just recently got on my radar talking about universal basic income. We have um, people like Tulsi Gabbard pushing for the same sort of progressive policies that Bernie uh, does. Uh, And uh, a lot of Democrats uh, running for office have not discounted the idea of the Green New Deal or, uh, you know, the Medicare for all and all these other uh, provisions and programs and stuff. Now, a lot of them are just paying lip service because they don't want to isolate or alienate those voters as of yet. But um, for the most part, the direction of the Democrat Party is not like we're moving towards like a Bloomberg figure. Uh, (laughs) Now, Oprah, 
Maybe, you know, because, hey, we're just the, I, I maintain that the people on the left, by and large, are just as stupid as, as the people on the right. And just as the uh, the right wing was suckered by a reality star who said he's going to build a wall, who knows what, you know, what liberals might be like, ooh, Oprah, huh? Uh, so I guess I can't totally discount the idea of an Oprah uh, even though she, too, is a billionaire. But she's got that, like, media, I'm larger-than-life media personality, just like Trump. Uh, so maybe her, uh, I doubt it severely, but I can see that a little more than Bloomberg. This idea that that Bloomberg is on any Democrat's radar as a serious contender for, uh, you know, getting this nomination is just fucking ludicrous to me. Uh, anyway, I, I've been bloviating for way too long. Let's let the idiots talk. I agree with you about Oprah. Just one thought on, so on Better. Everyone's going about Better. I was just well, first dying. of all, let's talk about his real name is Robert. Robert. So let's, okay. first of all, Bethel. let's get that out there in the <laughs> open. His real name Oh, that's so relevant. Wow, thanks, blonde-haired bimbo, for your brilliant contribution to the conversation. His real name is Rabbit. Like, why is that? Who cares? Who gives a shit what his real name is? I don't care if his real name is Robert. Does anyone care? Does anyone that's, that doesn't vote a straight R ticket give a shit if Beto O'Rourke was born Robert? You know, I don't. I don't see why anyone could care. So he decided he wanted a cooler sounding name than Robert. Big fucking deal. Who gives a shit? What does that have to do with anything? You idiot, you empty-headed fucking cream-faced loon. His name is Robert, so that Wait, was no, 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 Funnily enough, it's the name I was thinking about. I was like, what's his name? Yeah, yeah, shut her up. Good idea. Name going to be. And funnily enough, yeah, and, and in, in the concert of Elizabeth Warren, so there was a nickname that the president used for Elizabeth Warren before he settled on Pocahontas. It's one of my favorites, actually, but he didn't use it very much. Goofy. He called her Goofy <laughs> Elizabeth Warren. He did that I'm, well, at least <laughs> once, maybe more. I think that's a really good one for better. Just saying. I anyway. Think Robert's a good name. I think we should just call him <laughs> Robert. What his actual name is. <laughs> that's probably right. I think we should just call him Robert. <laughs> Look, uh, I'm no huge Beto O'Rourke fan. Um, the criticism has been thrown around about him as, like, white Obama. Uh, look, I think that Beto O'Rourke did what he needed to do. He went out there, he challenged Ted Cruz, a bunch of money was poured into his campaign. He could not unseat Ted Cruz. He got real close, and it was respectable, and he was a hard worker, and he got out there on the campaign trail, and he visited every single district in the huge fucking state of Texas, and he talked to voters and he fucking shook hands and kissed babies and did all the stupid shit that politicians in America have to do to get elected. Uh, and he didn't make it. But, you know, uh, in the process of um, energizing the Democrats in Texas, he did flip a bunch of, you know, uh, uh, local seats. Uh, Texas is a much bluer state now than it was before the advent of Beto O'Rourke. But he didn't win, you know, and uh, as much as I hate to admit that any of these people have a point, yeah, he's, he's still a loser. Uh, and, um, you know, to, to take someone who couldn't beat Ted Cruz and say he's going to beat Trump, I mean, like, that's like saying, you know, you didn't beat the first level of Super Mario Brothers, <laughs> but you're definitely going to kick World 8's ass. It's like, no, it's actually more difficult to beat Trump than it is to beat Cruz. Now, maybe uh, you could make an argument against me there and say, well, you know, you're in Texas is way more red than America as a whole. Uh, so maybe Beto is just the guy we need. But the problem is he doesn't have, you know, you, you got to have some sort of impressive position to run for president uh, from. Uh, you have to be a governor. You have to be a senator. You have to be at least a powerful congressperson. Uh, or uh, maybe, uh, in, in the case of someone like Trump, a, a noted 
public figure with a long history in business or something like that. There has to be you have to be on a, a high enough pillar of the social hierarchy where when you say I'm running for president, people take it seriously. Now, maybe that's unfair. Maybe that's not a reasonable standard. But you know what? Maybe it is because people want some proof that you're actually able to organize something uh, to run something big and um, uh, delegate responsibilities to people and ensure that you can actually do the job that you need to be able to do as commander in chief at overseeing the entire country. Um, and Beto, unfortunately, you know, did he run a hell of a campaign? Absolutely. Uh, did he uh, win it? No, he didn't. So he, he you know, it's a, in my mind, he's a fucking loser. He's an impressive loser. And, uh, you know, I, I think he should get back on that horse and try again. Maybe he can run for the governorship of Texas. Maybe he can run for some other position in Texas. But uh, as things stand, you know, he just he just isn't where he needs to be uh, to run for president. Uh, now, I could be totally wrong, totally off base. Maybe he's going to just show his campaigning chops yet again and really mobilize people and really uh, get his name out there in a big, powerful way. But, uh, you know, he, he strikes me as kind of uh, your typical sort of center left. I'm a moderate milk toast Democrat who's, you know, probably not. He's probably not f uh, far enough left to energize the, the the progressive base of the Democrat Party. Maybe he'll excite some moderates, but it seemed like the moderates are kind of, you know, going with Biden at this point. So uh, if anything, he's going to be competing for uh, Biden's voters, which, uh, you know, maybe I will. Maybe that that'll be his strategy. Maybe it should be because, uh, you know, I think Beto O'Rourke is definitely a more dynamic, exciting candidate than Joe snoozy Biden. Right. With you. Now, quick, quick uh, turn to the Republican side, because there has been a lot of speculation about a primary challenger for President Trump. What do you think? No. Non-starter. Yeah. Okay. It's not going anywhere. Another I have to agree with him on that. There's no there's no primary challenge <laughs> that's going to be made to Trump. There's no si anyone who tries it is just going to get crushed. They're just going to get crushed because uh, you look at Trump's popularity among registered Republicans. It's huge. They love him. Why wouldn't they? He's doing all the stuff that Fox News has been telling them for years needs to be done. So, of course, they love Trump and um, they're going to continue to love Trump. Uh, and any sort of idea that you're going to get Republican voters to uh, change course uh, in 2020 and go with someone else other than Trump is it's just uh, yeah, it's a non-starter. He's absolutely right. And not, do you agree with that? Well, I, I hope to see Kasich and Jeff Flake. I think that would be right. wonderful. I mean, we would all fall asleep within the first two minutes, it would be over. But wouldn't that be wonderful to see Kasich and Jeff Snowflake up there? I'd and, love it. And the, the other thing that I've, I've heard from a number of people is, is started to be written about is this notion that President Trump is actually not going to run again. And so I just wanted to ask you, what percent chance do you... Do you no, he's, he's running again. Unless Trump... Unless it turns out that Trump is dealing with some debilitating health issues.